Headliner Nation, I've got a riddle for you this week. Why is the waiver wire so important before week nine? Give up? Well, it could be the difference between sealing your fantasy football playoff berth or waving goodbye to championship aspirations. You might as well just hit that like button for horrible dad jokes. Here we go with the waiver wire. What's good, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle coming to you from the Draft.com studios with your waiver wire episode prior to week nine waiver wires running for you. So let's talk about who we are going to be putting claims in for this week. And in this episode, I have my must add player for you this week. If you need help at this position, you are absolutely going to make this guy your top priority. So we're going to talk about him here in a couple of minutes. For all the skill position players in this episode, nobody is more than 20% owned in fantasy football leagues. So there should be some deep diving guys for a lot of you as well that even play in larger leagues. We're going to talk about some really good streaming quarterback options for next week. And we're going to talk about some defensive streaming options for next week as well. So a little bit of everything in this episode. Buckle up, hit that like button. We're going to be talking about a lot tonight, so let's jump into it. The first name up on the waiver wire episode here in our first set of players is Darius Slayton from the New York Giants, one of my favorite under-the-radar players so far in 2019. Not only will he have some redraft value for you the rest of the year, but anybody that plays in a dynasty league or a deep keeper league, things like that, keep an eye on him for future seasons as well, because I think his skill set fits perfectly with what the New York Giants have right now. So let's talk a little bit about why I think he is an option for you this week on the waiver wire. Only 11% owned, so you're probably going to have a really good shot at getting him in a majority of leagues. But the reason I think he fits so well is because he is the deep play threat for the New York Giants. Now, obviously, you have some you have some really good players there that can receive the ball well. Evan Ingram, obviously, he's a guy that has played very well this season. But it's Golden Tate and Saquon Barkley. I think their skill set makes Darius Slayton even more dangerous. Now, speaking about Saquon Barkley, first off, obviously running the football, teams are going to keep an eye on him. He is the main weapon on that offense, but he's a great receiving option as well, whether it be out in the flat, a design play, whatever it may be, Saquon Barkley is typically going to have defenders coming a little bit closer to the line because of what he does with the football around the line of scrimmage. Same thing for Golden Tate. You're not going to see him running a ton of deep routes. He's going to be running some some things across the middle of the field, but he's not going to be going deep down the field. That's another guy that is going to cause defenses to creep a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Well, when you hit hit Saquon Barkley a few times, when he has a a few runs, when you hit Golden Tate a few times as well, when those things happen, then all of a sudden, like we saw this past weekend with Detroit, Slayton can take the top off of the offense, off the defense, and take one to the house for a nice touchdown. The guy's averaging over 16 yards per reception right now, and he's going to be more of a boomer bust player. But if you're looking for help at wide receiver, if you're in a deeper league, if you have some extra flex spots in your lineup, Darius Slayton is a guy who the rest of the season could be a nice play for you. Because even though you know, even though he might have some tough matchups coming up, his fantasy football playoff schedule, so a time in which you're not going to tinker too much, but you definitely want to keep an eye on on the matchups and the options, he's going to get the Eagles, the Dolphins, and the Redskins. So three really good matchups back to back to back when you're in the fantasy football playoffs. And that's why you need to keep an eye on him right now and potentially add him sooner rather than later. Next up on the list, Danny Amendola from the Detroit Lions. And nobody's really talking about this guy because you've got Kenny Galladay, you've got Marvin Jones. People are still talking about TJ Hawkinson quite often, but nobody's talking about Danny Amendola except for the 8% of fantasy owners who have him on their roster. So why should you be taking a look at him? Well, Danny Amendola, for me, may not necessarily be a season-long play, but he is a streaming option for Week 9 that you definitely want to take a look at. Atlanta is on the bye this week, Cincinnati, the Los Angeles Rams, and the New Orleans Saints. So you're losing a lot of really good wide receivers there. Danny Amendola specifically is a guy that could really help out your team this week. Why is that? Well, he's seen some really good volume over the last two weeks. Over the last two games, 19 targets, 16 receptions, and 200 yards. So not only good volume, but he's putting up numbers with the volume as well. But the reason he's such a good streaming option for Week 9, 
the Detroit Lions get the Oakland Raiders, who are giving up over 41 points per game to opposing wide receivers. This is set up for a beautiful matchup. Your big players are going to go to Jones and Galladay. However, after those two, who doesn't, one of those guys are, is going to be successful in a game. Galladay has a good game. Jones has a down game. Jones has a good game. Galladay has a down game. But the thing that's been consistent the last two weeks is Danny Amendola slots in as the second best wide receiver within that matchup. So keep an eye on him. Really good streaming option for you in week nine. Next up on the list, Alexander Madison from the Minnesota Vikings. And the reason that we're going to be adding him to the list this week is we're going to knock on wood. Dalvin Cook owners, you really need to stash Alexander Madison. The guy's averaging over four yards per carry and has had even a little bit of standalone value in some really good matchups for the Minnesota Vikings. So in those matchups in which we know the Vikings or we think the Vikings are going to get out to a really nice lead, Madison's been the guy that has really touched the ball quite a bit in the fourth quarter. Dalvin Cook's touch percentage goes down from quarters one through three and then to the fourth quarter. And in some matchups this year, Dalvin Cook's not even touching the ball 50% of the time in the fourth quarter. So Madison could have some standalone value in those matchups. But more importantly, again, if anything were to happen to Cook, even if it's just a one week where we say, you know what? We're going to rest him, a little banged up, whatever it may be from the Minnesota Vikings. Alexander Madison, depending on the matchup, more than likely is no less than a high-end running back to on your roster. So, again, Dalvin Cook owners, I really think you just need to add him and stash him. If you play with really shallow benches and you don't have the room, I understand that. But if you have the option to just keep him around, to be careful with your offense, and to have a backup plan for Dalvin Cook, Madison's going to be the guy that you could rely on if things were to go south. Anthony Miller at only 12% owned from the Chicago Bears might be a little bit of a surprise to everybody here. And this is another guy that seems to be breaking out of his shell a little bit. So we saw the breakout from David Montgomery this past week. Is the Anthony Miller breakout coming soon? I know it's tough to trust that with Mitchell Trubisky as the quarterback, But we've seen him creep up a little bit in terms of his numbers over the last couple of weeks. So I think we just need to keep a little bit of an eye on Anthony Miller moving forward. 19 targets over his last three games. 183 receiving yards over his last three games as well. So nothing spectacular. Nothing where we've said, hey, this is a guy that really is going to break out. However, maybe his upcoming matchup will do that for you because they get the Philadelphia Eagles next week. The Philadelphia Eagles are giving up the most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. So 100%, we're going to buy Allen Robinson next week. But Anthony Miller has gotten better and better and better over the last three weeks. So maybe his breakout is finally coming. And in a PPR league, this could be a guy that if you're really, again, dealing with some injuries, dealing with buys, if you just need somebody. Anthony Miller could end up being a decent play for you this week. So keep an eye on him. And more than likely, you're not even going to have to put a waiver claim in for him. You can wait for waivers to process and grab Anthony Miller afterwards. I think we could be in for a good week for him and Allen Robinson in week nine. In week eight, Jano Smith had an expert consensus ranking of 14 on Fantasy Pros. He was the 14th overall tight end heading into week eight. However, his highest ranking from any expert within that group was 7th. He was the tight end 7 for somebody, and can you guess who that was? I don't mean to run a victory lap here, Headliner Nation, but Janu Smith was my tight end 7 last week, and boy, did he return that value. I know a lot of you asked about him. A lot of you asked about Ryan Tannehill as well, and that was one of those mountains I climbed up last week, and I said, I'm going to die here in week 8 with or without Janu Smith, and he was excellent. So if you ended up grabbing him and starting him last week, congratulations. That was a great call by you, Headliner Nation. Great job getting into your lineup. Now, what's going to happen moving forward, though? We don't know for sure with Delaney Walker. Could his ankle injury linger a little bit? We'll have to wait and see. But the one thing that happens is when Delaney Walker doesn't play, Smith typically shows up. So at only 0.5% owned, which is absolutely baffling to me, the tight end position has been really bad after the first eight or nine tight ends, really. I mean, there's only eight tight ends that are averaging more than 10 points per game right now. I mean, for him to not be picked up and played more last week with Delaney Walker being out in the matchup absolutely baffles me. So he might be a guy that we take a shot at this week in case Delaney Walker ends up missing again. Six receptions, 
on seven targets last season or last week. Both of those led the Tennessee Titans. 78 yards last week also led the Tennessee Titans. So he was the main receiver for them last week. Tannehill has looked really, really good. Tannehill has looked excellent in his first couple of games with the Tennessee Titans. What's going to happen? Now he's the starter. He could be really good for Janu Smith and some of these other guys as well. A.J. Brown, obviously Corey Davis. We liked him this week. He didn't end up doing what we had hoped for, but the process just didn't meet the results. Sometimes that happens. But with Smith, he's definitely a guy that we're going to keep an eye on. He has a tough matchup in week nine, though. He's got the Carolina Panthers. They are giving up under 10 points per game to opposing wide receivers. So I won't expect too much, but too much, but he could be another decent streaming option for you this week if you're really fighting for somebody. If Delaney Walker is out again. If he's not, we're not going to play him. But if he is, we're definitely putting him in the lineup. A few weeks back, I warned everyone about Darren Fells and Jordan Akins. Both of these guys combined were a top five tight end. But who was going to get the majority of the looks every single week? It was really hard to predict. Well, Fells was the guy this past week. Six reception, 58 yards, two touchdowns, and only 12% owned. He could be a little bit more of a safer option. If you're looking for a tight end, maybe Smith isn't the guy because of his low ceiling next week against Carolina. Maybe Fells is the guy that you pivot to. And here's the thing, too. With Will Fuller being out, everyone automatically assumed Kenny Stills is going to be the next guy up, right? We've seen it already once a season. Week one, Kenny Stills obviously showed up, played very well, had a touchdown. But, I mean, he didn't do too much this past week. But the one thing that we've seen from Deshaun Watson basically all season long is he is targeting his tight ends, whether it's Aiken or Fells. It doesn't matter. One of these guys is seeing a decent amount of targets in every single game. And one of these guys is producing in every single game. And Fells is going to be my pick to do that moving forward. He seems to be the red zone, basically the, the red zone target for Deshaun Watson right now from the tight ends. But he is using his tight end position. Darren Fells coming into this week was already up to tight end 14. He basically snuck up there. I don't think a lot of people realized how high he actually was to being a tight end one. He is probably going to be a tight end one after this week has concluded with Monday Night Football. So there is a good chance he's within the top 12 tight ends by the time the week is over. So he's definitely a guy to keep an eye on. He's being looked at by Deshaun Watson all season long. Again, another option that if you need somebody to stream, this is definitely a guy. If I had to pick between the two Houston tight ends, this was this would be the guy now. He's probably a little bit safer than Smith upcoming in week nine, but definitely a guy that you should be taking a shot at if you need help at tight end. All right, Headliner Nation, I made you wait until the very end, but my number one waiver wire priority ad of the week is Miami Dolphins running back Mark Walton. Now, a couple of weeks ago, if you would have told me that the number one waiver wire ad is the Miami Dolphin, I probably would have laughed a little bit, but that's just how quickly some things change in fantasy football. Now, the reason he's going to be a definite ad for us is because this Sunday we learned right after kickoff that Kenny Drake was not making the trip to Pittsburgh with the Miami Dolphins. So now trade speculation is running running rampant. The trade deadline is coming up soon. It's almost, I wouldn't say a guarantee at this point, but it's pretty safe to assume that Kenyon Drake is on the way out of Miami. Mark Walton, over the last couple of weeks, has been getting more and more looks by the Miami, Miami Dolphins. They want to see what they have with this guy. Is he going to be the guy moving forward with this offense this season? 100%. Now, let me tell you why you should be adding him, even if you have the number one waiver wire priority, you are adding Mark Walton this week if you need help at running back. And here's why. Over the last two weeks, again, I mentioned they're trying to give him a little bit more, a little bit more. He has 98 yards on 20 carries, so he's averaging 4.9 yards per carry. On a Dolphins team that hasn't done anything this year, that's pretty good. However, it's the rest of the season. He's going to be a good streaming option. He's got the New York Jets this week, eighth most points to opposing running backs. But this is what his schedule looks like. To finish the season from here in week nine till the end of the season, he has five matchups against opponents that are within the top 10 of most fantasy points per uh, points per game allowed to opposing running backs. He gets the Jets twice. Again, just mention that eighth most. He gets Cleveland seventh most. He gets the Giants sixth most. And in championship week, for a majority of you, you're going to play your championship week in week 16, not week 17. If you don't do that, you need to talk to your league about changing it. For but a majority of you, championship week, he goes against the Cincinnati Bengals, who give up the most points as of right now 
to opposing running backs. Do you envision yourself starting a Miami Dolphin in the playoffs, let alone the championship game? Probably not. But he could be a super, super valuable flex option for you the rest of the the season. Only 11% owned. A lot of you are going to be able to get your hands on him right now. I highly encourage you to do that. He does have a few tough matchups coming up as well. Indianapolis, Buffalo, and Philly. Those are games that you won't start him, but you're not picking him up to start him in every single game. A lot of these guys that you're getting this time of year aren't like that. The guys that you're grabbing right now are the role players. Can you fit them in at good times against good matchups and have them help you get a W? That's what Mark Walton is going to do for you the rest of the season. So 100% keep your eye on him. If you can grab him this week, you need to. Definitely, I'm I'm saying it now. If you have the number one waiver wire priority and you need a running back, spend it on Mark Walton before week nine. All right, real quick, we're just going to fire through some streaming quarterback options for week nine. Not maybe a lot of guys that you're going to use waiver wire priority ads on, but you are going to potentially grab them at some point this week to stream them in week nine. So let's talk about them here real quick. Gardner Minshew, 49% owned. He gets Houston next week. They're giving up the six most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. Cam Newton is actually only 43% owned, but he could be back very, very soon. Kyle Allen didn't have the best week, and we've talked about it on this show. He hasn't been the most valuable fantasy football asset for anybody, but he's been a pretty good quarterback overall in terms of just being a football player. We're not talking fantasy football with that. He's been a pretty decent option. There was even some people talking about Kyle Allen taking the job from Cam Newton. Now, that's not going to happen, but Cam Newton could be back in week nine or very soon. 43% owned. If you need a a potential QB1 the rest of the season, it could be Cam Newton. Sam Darnold, only 15% owned for the New York Jets. I know he's had awful, awful back-to-back matchups. However, he gets Miami in week nine. Second most fantasy points per game allowed to opposing quarterbacks. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's 33% owned. He gets Arizona in week nine, giving up the fourth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. And then Derek Carr coming in at 18% owned. He had an excellent Sunday this past weekend. Uh, He gets Detroit, who's giving up the ninth most fantasy points per game. That could really be a back and forth there. I mean, Detroit just was basically taken to the wire by the New York Giants, who haven't been that great of a football team either. Oaken could potentially do the same thing. There could be a lot of back and forth. Derek Carr could have a chance to put up some nice volume. So all three of the, or excuse me, all five of these guys are guys that you could potentially stream in week nine. Ken Newton is more of a speculative ad for the for maybe the rest of the season. Minshew, Darnold, Garoppolo, and Carr are going to be ones that you'll look at at streaming in week nine, however. All right, to wrap up the show, we've got three defenses that we're going to be taking a look at that you could potentially stream in week nine if you need to do that. First up on the list is Seattle Seahawks. They're going up against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay against opposing defenses. Opposing defenses are scoring 11.88 fantasy points per game against Tampa Bay. A good potential double-digit week for Seattle. We know Jameis Winston is prone to some turnovers. If Seattle can cause that, those are some good, uh, good fantasy points for you right there. Dale is coming in next at only 11% owned. They're going to be getting the Giants. The Giants just put up a decent game against the Detroit Lions. However, I expect Dallas to be a little bit tougher. Now, defenses that play against Dallas, defenses that play against Dallas are giving up 11 fancy football point or fancy points per game. That's the fourth most. So, uh, so the Tampa Bay against Seattle, Tampa Bay is giving up the third most. The Giants against Dallas, the Giants are giving up the fourth most. And then for Denver against Cleveland, Cleveland's giving up the sixth most at just over 10 fantasy points per game to opposing defenses. So all three of these teams that we're seeing here right now all have an opportunity to get you double-digit points based on the offenses that they are going to be playing in Week 9. So if you need to stream a defense, these are the three that I specifically tell you to take a look at because of their low ownership and high upside this week. There you have it, Headliner Nation, my waiver wire ads for week nine. Definitely a lot of guys that you can be taking a look at this week, some quarterback streamers and some defensive streamers for you as well. Don't forget, though, hit that like button. More importantly, though, if you haven't joined Headliner Nation yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Become a part of Headliner Nation today, over 78,000 strong. And also don't forget to hit that bell notification as well. So anytime we're dropping content, which is every day of the week, or anytime we go live, which is Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, you're going to get a notification so you know that you can get up to date on the latest information from the fantasy headliners and as always make sure you drop some comments below if you've got any questions for us thanks again headliner nation appreciate you tuning into this episode we'll catch you on the next one have a good one